Hi. Welcome to the 2018 Prince George's County Public Schools Read Across America Day, the third annual. My name is Dave Zarin. I work with the school system's television resources office, and you may know me as the host of the Science Bowl Show. And I'm here today with my partner. Hi, I'm Kim Robertson from the technology training team. Yeah, we're going to have a good time today, Kim. And we're going to tell you a true story today that takes place in a country in the middle of South America, a place that you've probably never been to, maybe never heard of. And on this map, you'll be able to see in purple a place called Paraguay. Paraguay is one of the two landlocked countries in South America, just close by to Brazil and Argentina. And it's a story about some children that live in a very poor neighborhood, but it has a very happy ending. Let's read about Ada's Violin by Susan Hood and the beautiful illustrations by Sally Comfort. Here you can see the setting. There's a, there is our heroine, Ada. Ada Rios grew up in a town made of trash. Every morning at dawn, Ada heard the first garbage trucks rumble and roll down the road to Katera. Beep, beep, beep. Backing into the landfill, they tipped their loads up and up and crash. The trash came tumbling down, 1,500 tons every day. Imagine growing up like that, every day hearing those trucks, seeing that trash, smelling all of that. Ada and her friends watched as the gancheros, the recyclers, scrambled, tearing into plastic bags with long-handled hooks, pushing aside moldy produce, grabbing anything they could recycle or sell. How much did they get from all that? The going rate? Five cents for a pound of cardboard, ten cents for a pound of plastic. All that for so little money. This noisy, stinking, sweltering slum was not the most nurturing neighborhood. Boy, that's an understatement. Look at Ada there. Pretty eyes. Ada watched, eyes wide, but she didn't say much. And yet she liked to imagine each garbage truck was a box of surprises. One never knew what might be inside. Her father had found appliances, toys, perfumes, and antique watches. One woman even discovered a small box full of gold jewelry. Little did Ada know there was a bigger surprise waiting for her in the landfall. In the landfill, we continue. Every day when Ada's parents went to work, Grandmother Miriam cared for Ada and her little sister Noelia. Grandma loved to sing rock and roll songs from the 1960s. The girls grew up to the tunes of the Beatles. Simon and Garfunkel, and Creedence Clearwater Revival. Ada liked to sing too, but only when no one was listening. Maybe you're like me too, you like to swim in, uh, sing in the shower. Ada's dad, there he is, brightened the night with stories and songs of great musicians. He turned up the radio and pointed out the sounds each instrument made. Ada heard one above all others. Zing went the strings of the violin. When the girls started school, Grandma returned to work as a recycler, collecting bottles and cans in the city. Classes let out at noon. Young Ada was in charge of Noelia until her parents were done with work. At first, the girls stayed close to home. They were smart, playing with Grandma Miriam's doggies and making sand cakes in the dirt. Soon, they joined their cousins, playing hide-and-seek or a game of hardball, handball in the streets. All right, look at this scene. You can see there's some chickens, you can see some teenagers, and there's Ada and Noelia, Ada looking a little concerned. In time, they ventured farther afield, walking down to the bodega to get candy. But Ada noticed the teenagers hanging out in the alleys, grumbling about life in the landfill looming ahead. What would happen to them, to her, to her little sister? She watched as the older kids turned to gangs and got into fights. Imagine yourself there. You're probably thinking about going to college or having a career. All these people know is trash and recycling. Not much of a future. One day when Ada was 11 years old, her grandmother saw a sign posted on the wall of a chapel. If you speak Spanish, it said, Se enseña violín 
guitarra, violoncello, los sábados a los 8 a.m., Fabio Sanchez. That translated to violin, guitar, cello, taught Saturdays at 8 a.m., teacher, Fabio Chavez. Boy, what Grandma said, saw that. Look at her. She's, she's thinking how Grandma had longed to learn music. Too late for her, maybe, she thought, but not for her granddaughters. She signed them up without asking them or even asking their parents. Grandparents can do that. When you're older, you can get away with things. <laughs> Ada's, though, Ada's heart, though, sang out. Thanks to her abuela, which is Spanish for grandmother, she could leave her worries behind and learn to play. At the first class, the teacher, Fabio Chavez, had three guitars and two violins to share. Ada chose a violin right away. But 10 children had signed up. Boy, it doesn't add up. Frustrated, Ada and her friends found that there were not enough instruments to go around. Look at them all there. They all wanted one, but there, there just weren't enough. Well, there was a bigger problem. Everyone quickly realized that the children would need to practice at home because it wasn't safe to be seen with an expensive instrument in Katera, where a violin is worth more than a house. You know, sometimes you don't want to wear anything that's worth too much because you don't want to tempt thieves. Watching the children play amid broken glass and rusty metal, Senor Chavez, the teacher, knew he had to do something. He remembered a band called Les Luthiers that made its own instruments. That was it. He called Nicolas Cola Gomez, a gochero and carpenter, for help. So Mr. Gomez, he was not only a trash picker, but he was a carpenter. Senior Gomez found a discarded drum with a big hole in it. What could he use to fix it? He picked through the trash and discovered, look what he found, an old x-ray film. You can still see the, the ribs and the spinal cord. He wondered, would that work? Could that cover that hole in the drum? It did. Senior Gomez kept experimenting, and others like Tito Romero helped. Inventing instruments, as you can imagine, wasn't easy, but they fiddled around discovering which materials hit just the right notes. They transformed oil drums into cellos, water pipes into flutes, and packing crates into guitars. Look at the workbench there. Look at all of that scrap that they found in that recycling center, and somehow they're turning those things, those parts, into instruments. Soon, there were enough instruments for all the children who wanted to play. Ada chose a violin made from, get this, it was made from an old paint can, an aluminum baking tray, a fork, and pieces of wooden crates. You wouldn't think that was possible. Worthless to thieves, it was invaluable to her. It was a violin of her very own. Look at her face. You see how much she is smiling? Well, Senior Chavez set up a strict schedule of three-hour lessons. Three-hour lessons. The class had no classroom, so they played outside despite the 100-degree heat and sudden downpours. So not only did these youngsters have very little at home, here they are, they're practicing no air conditioning, out in the heat and the humidity with rain coming down when they least expected it. At first, Ada and the others struggled. Sharps and flats clanged and clashed. Playing an instrument is a process. It doesn't matter if one is rich or poor, ugly, fat, thin. You cannot learn to play an instrument overnight, Senor Chavez told the children. Some kids decided it was too much work and gave up, but not Ada. After lessons, she would practice at home, sometimes two hours a day. So that would be three hours in the class, two more, five hours a day she was practicing. In time, the screeches and twangs and tweets hit all the right notes. Their class became a small island where Chavez taught them to respect themselves and one another. Be kind. Always say please and thank you. Say you're sorry. Be dedicated when you commit to something, Senior Chavez told the children. Soon, the ragtag crew of kids learned to tune in, to listen to one another, to band together. The recycled orchestra was born. Imagine that. All of these kids, they're all now committed to each other. They're disciplined. They've found something they all love. From then on, 
There was something new in the air in Katera. Gancheros, look at them at the top, Gancheros trudging home from the landfill might lift their heads to hear the sounds of Ada's violin, or the strains of Bibi's cello, or the strum of Noelia's guitar. They're hearing music where they'd never heard it before. A symphony of sound helped to lift them beyond the heat, the stench, and their aching backs. With her violin, Ada could close her eyes and imagine a different life. She could soar on the high, bright, bittersweet notes to a faraway place. She could be who she was meant to be. She was dreaming of other places. As Ada's skill grew, so did her confidence. You know that. Whenever you practice at something, as you get better and better, you feel better. Your, your ego feels better. Once timid, Ada now took center stage playing solos. She helped teach the younger children, too. She became a role model. Her teachers and fellow students, they took note. When she was 12 years old, remember she started at 11, when she was 12 years old, Ada was named a first violinist. Imagine, she was first at something. Shortly after, she and her 39 fellow musicians were invited to perform concerts in Katera and later in the nearby capital city of Asuncion, Paraguay. Look at that picture there. Look at all those people sitting there listening to this recycled orchestra. Word of this extraordinary orchestra spread. Not on Instagram, not on Facebook, word of mouth. They didn't even have, they have no cell phones down there, and Ada didn't. Soon they were asked to perform in other cities and even other countries. Look at this, this is like a dream. If you look at the pictures there, Ada and her friends flew on their first airplane. They stayed in their first hotel. They swam in the bright blue waters of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. They sampled their first pastries, pastries and pineapple, and they saw sights they never imagined. Look at those sights over there. There's that great Buddha that you see in Tokyo. There's Christ atop the mountain in Rio de Janeiro. The Hollywood sign. They're going all over the world playing for people because people were fascinated by this recycled orchestra. The world dazzled them just as they dazzled the world. When Ada was 16 now, she's been doing this now for four years, the orchestra received a very special invitation. They were asked to tour with a world-famous rock band. More than 35,000 people waited them at their first concert stop in Bogota, Colombia, over, over 2,000 miles away from where she grew up. Ada was, she said to herself, I'm more than nervous. You can see her there. Look at, look at the look on her face. Look at the other ones looking out because they're thinking, how can we face 35,000 people? Ada didn't know how to enter, how to greet the audience. She just went blank, just like you would. Probably had butterflies in her stomach. She saw a giant stage with glaring lights, and she heard people screaming. Well, she didn't have to worry, because look at that crowd. And what are they all yelling? Catera, catera, catera the little band of children who had come all the way from Paraguay. As the recycled orchestra took the stage, the people who had paid to see the rock band cheered for them. The enormous audience sang and swayed to the music as the orchestra played. And as their performance came to a close, a crescendo of cheers, chants, and applause resounded across the park. The astonished kids, they bowed and they just kind of grinned at each other. They were probably pinching themselves, hardly believing what had just happened. The astonished kids, they kept on grinning. They had discovered the surprise waiting in the landfill. Buried in all that trash was music, and buried in themselves was something to be proud of. What a great story. Ada, Ada, she said at the very beginning here, one of her quotes is, to me, the violin, me violin means everything, the violin means life, and boy, it meant life for her, because had she not persevered, had they not put all of those pieces of junk together, had she not made beautiful music with all of her friends, she never would have discovered her true calling. She had that talent, and it just took other people to bring it out. So I hope you take, uh, take a lot of lessons from this story here, because uh, Ada is a real inspiration. And some of you, if you go online, you can find this story on YouTube, it aired on 60 Minutes on CBS a few years ago. You can probably download that as well.
But to hear them, I wish you could hear them right now. To hear them, you'd never know that those instruments are made of pieces of trash. So uh, uh, I hope you check this book out and uh, hope you get to hear and see the story of Ada's violin. Thank you.